Hello, I'm Tom Meeks, and this is 3D Design for Fun and Life, featuring Moment of Inspiration, using the uniquely easy noun and verb method. This session is palette three verbs, tab two transform, row three, deform group, including flow and the twist verb. The deform group. When we click on the deform group button, two verbs appear, flow and twist. These two verbs in row three of the transform tab are among the most fun. For those of us that enjoy personalizing objects we make for others as gifts, or simply love experimenting just for the gratification of creating something unique or elegant. For this lesson, we will locate the object browser to the left side of the screen to differentiate the function of the browser from the menu palettes and top right area of the screen. We do this by clicking on options and changing the scene browser position value to opposite and closing the dialog. We'll open the objects section of the browser. The flow verb. One of the most impressive things learned working with at-risk young people who come from challenging backgrounds is how much they enjoy making personalized gifts for those important in their lives. Flow is an essential tool when it comes to making personalization easier. The flow verb allows us to wrap text and shapes around the contours of target objects. It can be used with both 2D and 3D shapes. The best way to introduce the flow verb is to create several small sample projects. Many of our students enjoy creating tokens or coins related to their favorite games or to be given as expressions of appreciation. We'll use Flow to create a token to be given to celebrate a birthday, in this case for mom. We'll start with a blank base object that has already been created. We'll go to Menu Pad 2 by clicking on the Edit tab. We first select the base token and click on Copy. We then click on Paste. A new copy has been created and selected. We need to immediately name this new copy. We'll name it 100 MomCoin. We can then hide 200 token base. The reason we are working with a copy is that we may want to use this token for gifts for other people. Working with a copy preserves the master in its original state so that it can be used again and again. Now we will reveal the text and shapes we want to place on our new token. Notice that the names for the text objects also include information about the font name and sizes we used in creating them. Not all the fonts available to us work for 3D printing. Including the name of the font with the object name will help us with future text font selection. The fonts we have used successfully can be easily forgotten. Including the font name in the object name saves us from having to search through the entire font list to find fonts that work in the future. Yes, Lobster is the name of a font. We will copy mom and name the copy XX in case we want to use mom again later. We'll center the new XX mom using a line with the move as group option checked. Use both horizontal center and vertical center alignment to center mom. And then union to combine the token and the text as a single object. We want to wrap happy birthday around the top and 2022 around the bottom of the token. We'll use three 2D curves to accomplish that. For flow to work in this case, we need two target curves. Turning on 301 target top arc and selecting it shows us that this arc is just inside the rim of the token and is located in the top half of the token. Now we'll need a straight source line that is equal in length to the arc. We'll turn on 500 source line and select it. It's obviously shorter than the target. So, we'll use one of the new features in Moment of Inspiration version 4 to help us make both lines the same length. We'll click in an empty space to deselect everything and click on the top arc. The property box for the arc appears in the top right of the screen and there is a button labeled Details. We'll click on Details. A new dialog box pops up and we see the caption length with a button named Calc. 
Clicking on calc reveals the length of the arc is 114.64 mm. We click on that number and the value is copied to the clipboard. Close the dialog and deselect everything. Now, we select 500 source line. We see that the length is just 50 mm, so we'll click on the 50 mm number. And a new text box shows up. We'll use Ctrl V to paste 114.64 as the new length. Open the Transform tab. Click on Deform. And then click on Flow. The prompt says, select objects to flow. We'll use the object browser to select the happy birthday text and click on done. The prompt says, select base curve or surface. We'll click on the left side of the source line. The prompt changes to, select target curve near matching end. The matching end would be the left side of the arc. So we'll click on the arc at the bottom left. The new wrapped text appears. Click on Done. The way the text was wrapped was based on the relationships of the positions of the source line and the original text. The source line was above the original text. So the copy was created inside or below the target arc. Just the opposite is true for our year. We'll turn off 301 target. And turn on 302 target. Checking the length of 302 target reveals that it is exactly the same as the top arc. So we can use the same source line. We select 700 source using the browser. Click on flow. Select the base curve and the same end on the target arc. The year is wrapped inside or above the arc. Now comes the tricky part. The new text has the same name as the original text. So, if we hide the original text using the object browser, the new text is also hidden. To keep this from happening, we'll union the token and the wrapped text. Click on Boolean Union. Click on the token. Selecting in this order ensures the union result will retain the token's name. Then use the mouse to select the text as well We can now hide the original text and all the source and target lines. If we want to add a heart or two, we can use the copy and rotate verbs on the transform tab. Do one final union by first clicking on the token, selecting all the pieces and using Boolean Union. Mom's birthday token is complete. Based on our students' feedback, she will appreciate it. The Beaded Bracelet Project We have created a flat object surrounded by beads that is intended to be a bracelet. To make this transformation, all we need is a source line and a target line of the same length as the flat object. The target line is shaped like a bracelet. We click on Flow. Then select the flat object and click on Done. We next select the left end of the source line. What is different from the last project? is that we will select the opposite end of the target line because we want the text to be on the outside of the bracelet. Here is the result. 
Being able to design the bracelet's features in the flattened state and shape it later with flow makes designing any kind of jewelry a whole lot easier. The Personalized Cup Project In our noun introduction session, we mentioned that we often use the text noun with the 3D plane for creating special effects. We were talking about flowing text along the contours of 3D objects. We want to personalize this cup by adding a name and a decoration. Instead of using lines as our source and target objects to facilitate the flow, we will use a plane as our source and the surface of the cup as our target. Think of the cup's surface like the wrapper on a soup can. It has a width. We determined the circumference of the cup by clicking on the details button and then using calc. This gave us our surface width. The plane is the same height as the cup's surface, and the width of the plane is exactly as wide as the cup's surface. It can take some practice using a plane for flow, but with a bit of patience we soon get the hang of it. Just undo and retry if the results aren't immediately what you want. As we said, Flow is the primary way we can personalize the gifts we design to give to those we love, and it's wonderful to have this great capability. The twist verb. The twist verb can instantly change a mundane object into something extraordinarily interesting and elegant. The best way to demonstrate this capability is to dive right in with some simple examples. The first example is a simple triangular column. We'll begin in the front view. We'll click on the twist verb button. The twist dialog pops up in the upper right corner and the prompt says, select objects to twist. We select the column and click on done. The prompt changes to pick start of axis. We will switch to the top view and select the center point of the top surface. The prompt changes to pick end of twist axis. Returning to the front view, we will move our mouse along the z-axis and press the left mouse button. The prompt changes to choose twist angle. This value determines the degrees the object will twist from the bottom to the top. We can actually put a formula in this text box. Instantly, this becomes a lot more interesting than our original straight column, as we can see by using undo to return it to the original state. Let's hide the triangle post and show the rectangular sample. We'll try some different values. We'll include a negative value to show we can reverse the twist. Objects beginning with 300, 310, and 320 are exactly the same original design. They are each named based on the twist we will give them. Show object 300 fluted, positive. We'll twist this column 360 degrees. We'll hide this column and show object 310 fluted negative. We'll twist this column minus 360 degrees. What happens if we show both 300 and 310? Wow, this is different. But let's try one more thing. We'll use a circle to hollow the columns.
This complexity from a simple column was all made possible by the twist fur. The twist verb includes one option that we will demonstrate with 320, fluted, axis only. This time we will only define the axis about half the length of the column. At first, it doesn't seem to make a difference, but when we check the limit to axis option, we see a dramatic difference. Only the portion of the column covered by the shortened axis is twisted. The two sliders allow us to further refine the partial twist. As we can see, the twist fur has a lot to offer in a very simple to use package. Our last example demonstrates that small twists can be just as dramatic as large twists. We will loft these curves to form a leaf. That looks okay, but leaves don't usually grow straight like this. So, we'll give it a little twist to see if we can make it a bit more realistic. This time, we will define our axis at an angle, not straight up and down. If we truly wanted the ultimate realism, we would twist each leaf independently using slightly different values. But for now, we'll simply do a circular array. and show the flower pot to demonstrate creating a leafy plant. The creative possibilities are endless when we begin to explore the wonderful versatility of the twist fur. This concludes the introduction of the verbs found on palette three, tab two, transform. The next video in this series will introduce the verbs on palette 2, tab 1, edit. <laughs> I made this in, um, when I was at the program, I was thinking about my grandma and uh, her St. Mary that she had by the window. So I made this uh, lantern with the rose on it for her for Christmas, but I guess I'm going to give her it now. <laughs> <laughs>